Thank you, Lord, for the world, the land and the seas, and all that lives on it. Thank you for all that is provided for us from your world. We pray that we will all take better care of the world. Amen. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our service. I wonder if you can cast your mind back to the first Sunday in January and the theme of the service. I spoke about what God has given us, both as a church and as individuals, that Jesus came to earth to show us how much God loves us, all of us, and that his death on the cross has given us eternal life with God. And I reminded us that God wants us to ask him for things because God is able to do immeasurably more than all that we can ask or imagine. But I also asked you to think about what we, both as a church and as individuals, can give to or do for God. Have you had any more thoughts? I would like to read to you what our vicar Charlotte wrote in the Benefice News last week. Recently, the wardens and ministry team and inspiring Ipswich group for our Benefice met together. We were looking again at the plan for encouraging more people to come to know God across our villages. There were two particular things that came from our conversation. One was how important it is to pray. Please do continue to pray the inspiring Ipswich prayer as part of your regular pattern of prayer. The second was to encourage like-minded people to get together to plan. So if you have an idea of a group you would love to run at some point in the future, or an idea to bless the community, please do get in touch. Did that stir anything inside you? An idea that you might have been mulling over or something that just won't get out of your head? Do you have a heart for encouraging more people to come to know God across our villages? If you do, know that God will help us in whatever we do for him. God is ever faithful. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness. Time and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thine great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faith. Presence to cheer and to guide. 
with strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings are mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning you The reading is taken from Acts, chapter 6, verses 1 to 7. The Choosing of the Seven In those days, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. This is the word of the Lord. Are there any keen campers amongst you watching this morning? And what do you like particularly about camping? I want you to imagine the following scenario. You have discovered a wonderful campsite abroad that has every amenity swimming pool, games room, local fish and chip shop, you name it. There are a few people there from your own country, but the majority are locals who of course speak a foreign language. One night a terrible storm sweeps through the campsite, taking with it tents and belongings. The authorities guide everyone to a nearby school for shelter. It looks as if you'll need to stay there for several days before everything is sorted out. The trouble is that when the food and bedding are distributed, you foreigners seem to be left out or ignored. You try to explain, but you can't speak the language, and they can't, or won't, speak yours. If only you knew how to say, this isn't fair. This isn't fair is just what the Greek Christians were saying to the twelve apostles. The apostles didn't ignore the problem, but acted quickly. Sometimes we may know about a problem in the church or with other people we know, but we choose not to get involved. We hope it will blow over or someone else will sort it out, but sometimes it just gets worse. The apostles knew that God cares when people are hurting and he showed them a way to help the Greek Christians. The apostles acted quickly. Everyone was encouraged and even more people joined the church. God may surprise us when we start helping others, especially those who normally get overlooked. 
they were careful about who was chosen to help. Many jobs in the church need no special skills or abilities. Some do. It helps to be able to sing or play an instrument to be in the music group. The apostles simply wanted people to organise and help with sharing out the food. So what did they look for? The Holy Spirit is able to help in the work we do for God, no matter how large or small the task. What about us? If our church were like a campsite, how would you describe the kind of campsite it is? What are the great amenities we have? Can we share these with the people in our communities? But who is in special need, like the people who missed out on the food and the bedding? Are there people in our communities that need our help and support in some way? Who and what might we need to fix the problem with God's help? It would be perfectly understandable if you were thinking at the moment, but what is the point about worrying about this now when we're unable to meet together in the church? But God's mission has not stopped because of the pandemic, so neither should we. As a ministry team, together with the church wardens, we have been looking at ways of doing church differently over this last year. We have online services, obviously, and enjoyed holding driving carol services over Christmas. We are holding Zoom coffee mornings and prayer meetings and have been regularly meeting to look forward. Now is the perfect time to take stock of what we do. Could we do anything better? Or could we be doing something new and completely different? If we are going to encourage people to come to know God across our villages, how are we going to do this? Do we have anything prepared or in place? Charlotte also asked us to continue to pray. Could you make this part of your regular praying, asking God what he wants you to do as a church or as an individual? God has given us many things, including our gifts and our possessions. We can use our money, time and energy, either just for ourselves or with God's help for sharing with others. I will offer up my life in spirit and truth, pouring out the oil of love my worship to you in surrender i must give my every part lord receive the sacrifice of a broken heart jesus what can i give what can i bring to so faithful a friend to so loving a king savior what can be said what can be as a praise of your name for the things you have done Oh, my words could not tell, not even in part Of the debt of love that is owed by this thankful heart You deserve my every breath for you've paid the great cost Giving up your life to death Even death on a cross You took all my shame away The defeat of my sin Opened up the gates of heaven And have beckoned me in Jesus, what can I give? What 
what can I bring to so faithful a friend, to so loving a king? Savior, what can be said, what can be sung as a praise of your name for the things you have done? Oh, my words could not tell, not even in part of the debt of love that is owed by this thankful heart. The second reading is taken from Philippians 1, verses 12 to 26. Paul's chains advance the gospel. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defence of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached, and because of this I rejoice. Yes, and I will continue to rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will do in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is to gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labour for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain, and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith, so that through my being with you again, your boasting in Christ Jesus will abound on account of me. This is the word of the Lord. In this letter to the Philippians, Paul exhibits an amazingly positive attitude towards his life and ministry and those of his Philippian readers. This is despite his terrible circumstances, and he probably wrote this letter whilst under house arrest in Rome. His confidence and hope burst out of the page. However, they are not rooted in his wishful thinking or his own abilities, but in the faithfulness of God. Paul has seen how his suffering for Christ's sake has resulted in the gospel being preached and this inspires him to have confidence that God will further use him and the Philippians. He expresses his hope as follows. He will be delivered from his present trials, whether dead or alive, in verse 9, 19. He will be given courage to proclaim Christ without shame in prison. His witness while captive will result in Christ's exhortation, verse 20. If he continues to live, his ministry will be fruitful, verse 22. Paul is extremely confident that the Philippians will overcome their struggles and God will complete his work in them, in verse 6. Paul's faith, despite his circumstances, challenges modern Christians. How do we view our church, our world and ourselves? Are we hopeful, 
and faithful or despondent and gloomy. Take heart that whatever circumstances you are facing, as it says in the Bible, God will deliver you, even if that might be through the final victory over death in 2 Corinthians verse four, chapter 4. Have faith that the Holy Spirit will help you when you share Christ with others. Matthew 10 verse 19. Believe that God will use your witnessing even if you can't see him doing so. Hebrews 4 verse 12. Your work for God will produce fruit. Colossians 3 verse 23. And have faith that God will work in other Christians. Hebrews 6 verse 9. Jesus calls us to go and make disciples of all nations. That includes Westerfield, Tuddenham and Whitnesham. And surely he will be with us always to the very end of the age. Let us pray. 
Father God, we recognise and thank you for the way your Holy Spirit is shaping the lives of each of our church members. We thank you for the people who keep the machinery going, but we also give you thanks for the people who show in their lives the attributes that the Bible says are important, such as patience under fire, a humble spirit, a servant heart, and not returning evil for evil. We pray that when the going gets tough, and we have seen this so viv vividly over the last year, you will make us more patient, humble, serving and compassionate. Today we think of how, among God's people, we can use our possessions and gifts that you have given us. If we are selfish, then we may limit what you can do in and through us will be poor examples as Christians, may make people think that you are selfish too, leave people without the help and support they need. We thank you for all the good things you have given us and ask for wisdom to know how to share those gifts with others. We thank you, Lord, that you are a faithful God we thank you that whatever we do for you, you will be there to encourage and help us. We pray that we will catch hold of your plan and mission for our benefits and communities and join you on that journey in faith. May we have your ears to hear of those who are in need or distressed, your eyes to see what needs to be done and your heart to show your compassion and love through us to the people around us. In these difficult times, Lord, we pray for all those in our parishes, for the schools and nurseries, nursing and care homes, and businesses and home workers, for those who are on their own and who may be suffering with loneliness, anxiety or depression, and for families who are struggling with homeschooling whilst balancing their own work and commitments within the confines of their homes. May we be there to help and support in whatever limited way we can and to display God's light in their darkness. Loving Father, as part of the inspiring in the Ipswich Initiative our benefice is actively involved in leading our churches into growth and pray for God to move powerfully in our communities. We pray together the inspiring Ipswich prayer. God of mission, who alone brings growth to your church, send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning wisdom to our actions and power to our witness. Help your church here in Ipswich to grow younger, to grow in numbers and to grow leaders. In spiritual commitment to you and in service to our local community, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our inspiring Ipswich Benefice Group will be sharing the plan they have drawn up with all of you in the near future. This is a benefice plan, which means that as members of the benefice, we all have a part to play. Please pray about what you can contribute to the growth in our churches and discern what God's plan is for you on that journey so that we may serve him more faithfully as he is faithful to us. into our hearts Jesus put this song into our hearts It's a song of joy no one can take away Jesus put
put this song into our hearts Jesus taught us how to live in harmony Jesus taught us how to live in harmony Different faces, different races, he made us one Jesus taught us how to live in harmony How to be a family Jesus taught us how to be a family Loving one another with the love that he gives Jesus taught us how to be a family Jesus turned our sorrow into dancing Jesus turned our sorrow into dancing of sadness into rivers of joy, Jesus turned our sorrow.